Well, hey again, everyone. I hope you guys are holding up fairly well, and uh, I feel it was about the right time to do an update on the channel now because I got a little kind of out of phase to get things done when I wanted to get them done. So it's like going to be a little bit of a, a break in there that I didn't intend to. So I felt like this is a good point in time to get you guys up to speed on what's coming up on the channel and what I'm kind of working on and when it'll be landing and stuff like that. But, uh, Main thing right now is the commentaries, and I know you guys have been very much enjoying what we've been putting out. We just put out the one for Jaws over the weekend. Hope you guys really were excited to see that drop in the feed and stuff like that, and uh, we just really wanted to hit that, not exactly on the 45th anniversary, because that landed just like a couple of days after the 25th anniversary of Batman Forever. We're very much kind of intent on getting that on the anniversary date, and of course... A couple days after that, Joel Schumacher passed away, so stuff like that. But regardless of that, so we got it out to you guys. Hope you're loving it and enjoying that. But you thought was if you thought that was the big surprise, thought you thought that was the biggest commentary that we were gonna do in the, in this in this uh, new wave of them that we're doing. Uh uh man, we got something for you guys. It's coming up probably this weekend. <laughs> It's one of those commentaries that just goes right off the fucking deep end. Goes right off the fucking edge, man. Just this, the whole thing is, as I kind of posted somewhere, that the shit is going to hit the chainsaw. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the next generation. We record it. It's fucking, sh just fucking off the fucking wall, man. It's just out of control, man. That movie... We're gonna, you're gonna have to wait. You're gonna wait and listen to it and stuff like that. We got this whole thing ready for you guys. I've listened to it quite a few times already. Just like, man, it's fun. It, it's a fun commentary for such a fucking batshit movie. But, <laughs> regards to that, we are going to be recording some brand new commentaries, and Trent is back in the mix on this whole thing. And we are finally going to record the Teenage Mutant Ninja Trolls 1990 film commentary. And the three-man booth is back. We're doing RoboCop. We've been planning this for a while now. We were, we, we, I kind of pitched it late last year, as like, or where it was, whenever we were planning out to do the next set of them, of maybe doing the whole trilogy. And we're kind of, we're kind of not certain if we're going to do the sequels, but we're definitely doing the first film. And we had some things going back and forth what we we're going to do about. It. But right now it's just the first film, and we've got some other stuff planned for three-man team stuff later on in the year. Some other franchise stuff that's a little interesting, but when we get closer to those months, I'll talk about that stuff. But those two are the ones we are mainly getting done first. So those will be the next ones after Chainsaw Massacre of the Next Generation. So we'll have an uptick in quality of films, and then we'll have some more interesting stuff for Steve and myself. Because we're getting back to some Rennie, Rennie Harlan. We're doing Deep Blue Sea. We did Jaws, we gotta do Deep Blue Sea. Then we can do Jaws sequels. We gotta get to the CGI, Samuel Jackson, LL Cool J, Rennie Harlan Madness. So we're gonna get into that, and we are going to be doing a commentary on the remake of The Hills Have Eyes. Now, I did do a review of it about two years ago, but even then, Steve was kind of hot on doing a commentary because he's very much a fan of that, and I just felt like, at the time, I was very intent on doing the review... But enough time has passed. I, I feel like at least a year, if a, at least a year has passed since we did, I did the review, I feel more open to kind of going off and doing commentary then. So that type of thing. So it's been well over that point in time. We want to go and do it. We're going to take care of it. So we'll get a little Wes Craven talk in there because he's a producer on the film, which is a remake of his own movie, stuff like that. And then we'll move on to other things. But that's what we have planned for our full slate of commentaries Stuff coming up this weekend that we're going to be releasing, and then stuff we'll be recording in the coming weeks. So, it'll be great to get Trent back in this thing. He's very, very anxious to do that. I've been, I've been wanting to develop this idea with Trent to do sort of a podcast idea, a Forever Cinematic podcast, but I've just been so wrapped up in everything else. I just haven't had enough time to just sit down and kind of develop some ideas for more than maybe one or two topics. And this feels, I've got some things that are kind of like half, des, half developed. I just haven't had time to just 
flesh the whole thing out and figure out what to do with it and just kind of figure out the logistics, all that uh, type of stuff of where we're going to release it, how we're going to release it, stuff like that. Just like I just haven't had the time between work and planning out the reviews and the editing of that stuff and doing all the stuff to plot out where the commentaries are releasing and stuff like that and planning new ones. Just a lot of stuff I've been up to and just like it feels like I really want to do something like that. I'm just trying to find out where the hell I can plan that stuff out in the midst of everything else I do. So it's a little thick, a little heavy on trying to get all that stuff figured out that I want to figure out. But it's still still in the hovering, uh, holding cycle of stuff. So there's that. Review-wise is where things are getting a little bit off the track in a certain way. Because I've been, as I've been mentioning on recent updates, I've been kind of planning to do the Star Trek VI review. I've been watching, because there's three slightly different edits of the film. There's one that was the original theatrical version, there was one that was originally released on home video. It was on VHS and Laserdisc. The Laserdisc version got poured over to the original DVD. Then Nick Meyer went in and did a bit more of a definitive version of the film for himself. So I've been kind of like, every month or so, I'd be watching a different version, stuff like that. And I got really thick into the goddamn research of this thing. Just like intensely everything you could possibly imagine. It's like there's episodes of Next Generation that tie into this. There's an episode of Voyager that ties into this. There's all these little things that just like there's so much so many things that kept branching out to have all these different things. And I just had a trouble getting up into doing the review. Because I was gonna do it on Saturday, but Saturday was fourth of July and so there's Fireworks going on all over the place. I can't record shit with all that noise. And Sunday night didn't work out, and I tried to shooting it. I tried shooting it like late Sunday night, and it just didn't quite work out. I started shooting a bit of it, but I, I just just kind of decided, okay, I can't really push through this one right now. I've got to kind of put it on the back burner of sorts. I got to kind of figure things out, and kind of reset myself. Because it's like, I'm, I've been pushing so hard to get all this information locked up. And I've been watching so many different episodes of all the different series and stuff like that. So I felt like I was a little, maybe not so much burnout, but I felt like I was just pushing things a little too heavy and thick and stuff like that. So I felt like I, I, need, to, I need to take a pause, shift gears over to something else, and then come back to that. So it was the whole thing where I had this nice long four-day weekend, and it just turns out... I just don't end up getting anything done on these extended weekends that I have, but I've, I've been trying to get things done. So I kind of shifted gears. And here's where the long stories get in. I'll try to make as brief as I can at, the, at this point. But I eventually decided I was going to do a review on a film that I've been kind of having in the queue for the last couple months, Conan the Barbarian, the Arnold Schwarzenegger film. But I only have the DVD version. I want to upgrade to the HD version, but it's apparently very difficult to find the Blu-ray. I did go to a bunch of secondhand shops, and no one had it. They had the HD version of the sequel, and they had the HD version of the remake. Nobody had it except for Barnes & Noble, whose prices are much higher than everyone else's stuff. So I would have had to pay like $15, $16 for the whole thing. I felt like that's just at least double the price of what I was really looking to get it for. And so I kind of put that off. I put it back and decided, okay, I'm just going to find a way to order it online, stuff like that, and so on and so forth. So because I was going like, okay, I can go out and grab the thing. I can watch all the bonus features and shoot the thing tonight and stuff like that. just felt like I was out in the, <laughs> out in the hot sun today driving around for all these hours. I just didn't have the energy left for it. So I just figured, you know what, I've gone, all, gone along on this journey long enough. It just feels like too much money to pay for this thing. Because I did the same thing for Sleepy Hollow at the beginning of the year. Where I really wanted to get on top of that really fast. And I was like, okay, I know I can get it at Barnes & Noble. Pick it up there and pay an extra cost for that. But I felt like I really just didn't need to do that for this one for a reason. So I just felt like, okay, let me just decompress. I can shoot this update tonight. Get something out on the channel to let everyone know where things are landing. But regardless, that review is going to happen. Conan the Barbarian will happen. So that's just going to be pushed off to a certain other date next week where I'm going to work on it. Because I have four days I'm working, then I'm going to record commentaries on Sunday. I got no time. So that's going to be in the mail, shipping from Amazon, with a couple other things I have, 
which I'll talk about in the next update. But regardless of that, some other stuff I do have on media pickups, but again, Conan the Barbarian is the first one I'm going to do. Then I'll see where I feel about doing things, especially with the t see what kind of time I have in my schedule. See if I can segue back into Star Trek VI and move forward on that. Because I got all the information catalog. I got all this shit ripped off of discs and all these different things and stuff compiled in playlists to download. I've got tons of stuff already set up for this thing. So all I have to do is just decide to actually do it. So that's all it is. I've been ripping discs and doing all this shit. I got so many notes on this thing. It's insane. So I know it's going to be, when I get to it, it's going to be a very involved video. And I want to make sure that when I do it, I'm being as clear and succinct as I possibly can be. So it's not like this gigantic, insane beast. Make it more of a mild beast. So I'm going to try to work on that. So one thing at a time. And I have some other stuff, again, to happen after that. But once I get through all this big stuff, I'll see where things land for the next update. So there's that. But some other stuff to talk about in terms of that, but I'll, I'll get to that momentarily. But uh, I picked this up because I think I was looking for stuff to pick up at Target. And for some reason, I just, I just whatever it was, when I was looking through stuff, I ended up finding that they had the top, new Top Gun remaster on Blu-ray for $10 at Target. So I went ahead and picked it up. Uh, I haven't... I haven't sat down and watched the film yet. I started watching part of the newer uh, behind-the-scenes stuff where they had interviews from from everyone. Bruckheimer, Tom, Tom Cruise, and all this stuff. It looked really good. The footage looked really fucking good. Because I was looking at the caps of Hulks, I was like, blow me the fuck away. Because I only had the, the old DVD version, the special edition one. And so it had been a long time since I watched it. I haven't watched this since they did a theatrical re-release, I think it was like 09 or something like that, somewhere around there, 2010 maybe, and I went to see it, and it wasn't the best experience, because they, for a reason, they didn't have the image fill the entire screen, so it was kind of like black box all around it, and they didn't give me my free poster when I went to see it, and stuff like that, so I had to put in a, a little bit of a complaint about this thing, situation, so the uh, manager at that uh, AMC theater actually... Uh, did contact me back at the time, and he uh, said he'd give me the... I think he might give me a voucher or whatnot, but he gave me the poster and actually gave me another copy of the DVD. But I already owned the DVD, and so ultimately I ended up selling that off on eBay for, like, fucking nothing. So, <laughs> regards to that, that was my little story about Top Gun. But, I'm like, okay, yeah, this seems like a good thing to upgrade. It looked really... the, the, the stills, again, the comparisons look phenomenal. And it's like, okay, they got, got some new features or an HD and stuff like that. It's like, okay, I can take this. I can go for this for 10 bucks, really easy, no problem. So I'll definitely sit down and, and watch and enjoy it. It's like, it's light fun. Top Gun, I'll, I'll, I don't think I'll ever do a review on it. There's like, nothing I really want to do as a review. It's just one of those things I just want to sit down and enjoy it. It's just a fun film that's just a perfect encapsulation of 1986 with the, the music and different things going on in the film. It's a really nice thing. Tony Scott. Just criminally underrated in such a way. Just like, man, Tony Scott was such a goddamn good director. Even though I talked about the, on the last update about Last Boy Scout, how that was such a, ended up being such a pro production mess of so, such things. They had to get all these different editors in the film and trying to futz around to kind of salvage the whole film and editing and all these different things. Eventually one day I'll get to a review of that because there's just a mountain of things. But the problem is no one wants to talk about the film. So there's no interviews, there's no commentary tracks, there's there's no behind-the-scenes footage anywhere. So it's kind of a hard thing in editing to put it together when it's just the film and maybe a few stray stills here and there. So it's going to be, it'd be interesting. I, I I don't know. But I still haven't gone back and watched the film, but it'll come around. But again, Tony Scott, True Romance, Enemy of the State, Crimson Tide. This guy directed some really phenomenal thrillers and really good action films. And I just don't think he ever quite got as much recognition as he really deserved for the stuff he did. His version of Man on Fire is just a real heavy fucking movie. I tried sitting down and watching that for a review a couple years ago, but by the end of that film, man, you just don't feel amped up to get up in front of the camera and start talking about how good this film is. It's just like, it's heavy, man. 
It's heavy. It's very stylized, but him and Denzel were a hot fucking team, man, for a little while there, man. They did some really exceptional stuff, but something else to kind of jump on here was something that's was out of print. But uh, last time I was uh, talking a little bit about X-Files, and I kept watching stuff, and it kept coming up on certain things I was looking up on the line, and there's a couple of videos I was watching, it's like, you know what, I probably could get a video out of the X-Files movie from 1998, Fight the Future. I could maybe do that, and uh, I haven't watched an episode in roughly a week, but I'm kind of gradually making my way through stuff. So I, I'm kind of working my way through like the mythology episodes up to the point probably where this comes in after season five. It's something that's like I'm not charging forward to get to it because, I, like I said, I've got two other videos I want to get to first. It's something that's kind of laying in there. It's like when I feel right about doing it, I probably will do it. And this was, again, out of print for some reason. Uh, it was very, very hard to find. Obviously, I did find a copy, and that was through Reckless Records here in Chicago. I ordered it through their website for like $10 with the shipping. Because everyone else was charging. Again, when things go out of print, prices skyrocket and you just can't find a decent price of anything. It's like, almost kind of like, okay, you're going to sell this thing for like $50, $60. Who actually is buying this at that price? What do you, who do you expect to actually pay this money for this product that's just grossly overpriced just because it's out of print? I just don't, I just really just don't understand. I just don't understand the mentality of it. Sure, I can see maybe pumping it up a little bit for a premium thing, but jacking the thing up so much, it's just absolutely fucking ridiculous. In fucking sane. You can, I think it was looking at this, there were some just, just beyond obscene prices. Don't understand it. But regards to that, I grabbed this up. I never saw the second film they put in 2008. I watched the trailer again. I still wasn't interested. The reviews weren't very good. Kind of shot itself in the foot on the box office because they put it out a week after The Dark Knight, a movie that made a billion dollars at the box office, and you put out this kind of lukewarm X-Files sequel that no one was super anticipating in a certain way. I think there was more anticipation when they did the Revival series, but I'm not even getting into that. I watched one episode of that, which was a giant exposition dump episode. It was like, and I'm just not feeling it anymore. But regardless, I can get into a fair amount of things about the 98 mil because I had the uh, the DTS DVD version of it, but obviously this has brand new features in HD, stuff like that, so there's a lot more stuff to get into through this version, which was put out uh, probably about 08, 09, I think it was. So that's all right. I don't know because now Disney owns Fox. God knows if this is ever going to go back in a print at any decent cost, so I bought it at the time because like, okay, this is the only place in the entire goddamn internet that has a reasonable price for this for like four or five ninety nine. Just get it now, put it on the shelf. When I get around to it, I'll have the copy instead of it having slipped through my fingers. And like every copy out there is just uh, overpriced obscenity. <laughs> so there's that. But uh, there's that. So, yeah, again, I only had the first seven seasons on DVD. I never upgraded the Blu-ray because there were certain things. I was, I was really contemplating it last year. But because they did a lot of stuff where, one, all the stock footage and all the visual effect shots are just standard def upgrades. They just up it. So they didn't redo any of the visual effect shots in the series. And because they also did the whole thing where, even though they say from the director of photography that they did kind of shoot it with a widescreen format in mind, there is still cropping done on the top and bottoms to make that whole composition work. And I'm not very high on them recomposing the frame from how it was originally broadcast. Because it does change the complexion of the series and stuff like that. So, even though watching the DVDs, it could definitely benefit from the HD upgrade of the resolution, especially with how dark the series was shot and very grainy and stuff like the DVD stuff where they put four episodes on there. And the compression quality isn't like the highest end stuff they could have. It's kind of more right in the middle there. So you could definitely see that, but I'm not dropping the $100 on the series set. I got enough things to worry about. I got other stuff to, pay, to buy to make the sh this channel 
move forward. I'm not getting it just to do a review on one movie. I'm not doing that. When I did the Star Trek The Next Generation stuff, I got that because I wanted to get the series on Blu-ray. I wanted to get that because it's my favorite series of all time, and I love it. And I got that, and now I'm kind of contemplating after watching more Star Trek, getting other series sets. But it's like, again, slow the fuck down. I'm not buying anything that pricey right now. Which brings me to my one laser disc pickup. Because running around town, looking for Conan the Barbarian on Blu-ray, I was I checked on again the, the second hand shops, all these different places, then I had to go out. I realized that the the Barnes and Noble I had to go to was not far from other stores I could check out for that. Thankfully I stopped at a half price books where they didn't have the Conan thing, but they had Alien on Laserdisc and a very particular version of it because the audio from this thing, this AC3 Dolby Digital Surround Track is taken from the original 70 millimeter six track magnetic sound masters. And when I posted this on the Laser Just Forever group, guys were saying, man, the bass on this thing kicks. I don't have a subwoofer, but man, I was reading up about this some time ago. And just like, I gotta get this version. I love my Blu-ray version. It's one of the best high-def restorations I've ever seen. And I did, when I posted this on Facebook, my regular feed, Steve was like, do I smell the commentaries? Like, I'll fucking do alien commentaries. On a heartbeat, man. But fuck. I turned around, saw this. It was nine ninety nine. The, the cheapest copies online go for double that price. And this thing is in, like, perfect fucking condition. There's not a blemish on this thing at all. Just fuck me. I was like, I had to get it. Because I, 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 I turned around. I saw it staring me right in the face. It's like, is this the version? So I left my phone in the car. So I had to go... Go grab it from the car, check it up on L LDDB.com. Sorry, I'm trying to get this into the freaking plastic sleeve here so I don't scratch it or whatnot, but I had to go off and double check it. It's like, yeah, this is it. This is the version I've been looking for. I'm going to have to watch this. It's widescreen. It's got this, again, I don't have the, the proper AC3 setup, but I can still get some of the experience through what I have. Because there's apparently some different music cues and different things going on. The mix is different. I just got to experience this on and and any fashion I possibly can because I just fucking love Alien and this. I want to get that soundtrack from Entrada, but I've been kind of just putting it on hold for a little while. Maybe I don't know. Just been sitting around waiting for it. But regards to that, <clears throat> I gotta watch that man. I gotta watch that sometime soon. But I got some other things to catch up on before we get to the next set of commentaries. So I got to get up on that. But, uh, fuck. It just looks wonderful, doesn't it? Nice and simple. Got this great back. So all the, all the chapter listings over here. Got the synopsis stuff. A couple stills. And, of course, you got, if you can see that at all, that's the, uh, information about the, uh, I want to make sure that autofocus kicks in. But that's all the information about the THX LaserDisc uh, certification about the the 70 millimeter theatrical print uh, sound mix and all that type of stuff. So, fuck man, yes, I, I, I like. I, this is one of my definite gets. I was like, I gotta, I gotta figure out. I gotta, I gotta hear this thing. I gotta hear this thing in some way, shape, or form because Alien is phenomenal. One of my favorite films, and it's like, goddamn. Got to go for it. Had to go for it. It's like ten dollars. There was no exception. And oddly enough, they had a whole bunch of X Files laser discs there as well. But I got DVDs, stuff like that. I don't need that. But that had to be owned and stuff like that. So uh, that's all I have at this point in time. Again, I'll be working on Conan the Barbarian as soon as that disc arrives. It'll actually show up on Sunday with a couple other things while we're probably recording commentary. So. We'll see where things land in my schedule to work on that. We'll see how things pan out and stuff like that. So, guys, get ready for that Texas Chainsaw Massacre next gen commentary. I can't, and words can't ex describe. I just want to release it. I'm just so, <laughs> so excited to release this madness on you guys. It's just insane. This insane. It's just like I just can't 
fathom what the fuck is going on in this movie. It's so insane. I don't even ha I don't have words for it. Listen to the commentary. It's going to hit this weekend. So we have a little bit of a buffer zone from Jaws. Release that, and then you guys can indulge for the weekend. Just like, God fucking damn it. Anyway, because I didn't get the Scream Factory version. I got this old fucking crusty goddamn DVD that looks like garbage. But regardless of that, guys, uh, I think that's all there is. I, I did post up a couple of new things on the YouTube channel for Hemi. A couple of little things from the vault that I had sort on here that I needed to splice together. And so there's a couple new things up there to enjoy from those guys, which Trent is the front man of the band, bassist as well. So put some good stuff up there recently. Go check out, check up on that. There's some fun, fun stuff to enjoy. And uh, that's really all I got for you guys. So uh, if I, I can, keep wanting to say something more. I don't know if there's anything else to talk about. But regardless, I did, um, for the Star Trek VI one, I finally did open up my, uh, I had this sealed laser disc of Star Trek VI. I finally un unearthed it. I kind of opened it up and stuff like that. It was really kind of momentous in a certain way. But anyway, I'm getting out of here. Thanks so much, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.